Now we are taking up the topic matter and its composition and before we do that we should know what actually the matter is. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass is called as matter. If, it occup if anything which we use occupies space that means it has certain volume and mass means it has the quantity of matter in it. So anything anything which you come across which has space when you keep it it occupies space and it has mass also is called as matter for example this marker it if i keep it it will occupy space and also it has certain mass also so it is also a form of matter matter is now formed of three kind of particles the particles can be atom it can be molecule it can be ion so we'll be taking these terms in detail later but for this moment i want you to know them in brief what actually these are atom is the smallest particle which does not exist independently it does not exist independently i'm repeating it keep in mind atom does not exist independently and molecule molecule is actually formed by the combination of atoms when two or more atoms combine they unite they form a chemical bond and they form a molecule for example co2 see in co2 there is one carbon atom and there is two oxygen atoms so that means three atoms are just combining they are linking by chemical bond and they form a molecule and now what is iron see atom as a whole is actually a neutral we'll be studying it later on the atom consists of three kinds of particles proton electron and neutron proton positively charged electron negatively charged and neutron has no charge so in atom there is atom is electrically neutral because the number of positive charges is equal to the number of negative charges but whenever the, it undergoes a change in which electrons are lost or electrons are gained it does not remain neutral it does not remain atom it becomes ion it becomes ion so that means atom which bears a charge whether positive or negative it is called as ion so matter can be formed of any of three it can be formed of atoms it can be formed of molecule it can be formed of ion so these are the three constituents of matter now how now the question comes how we can feel the matter so matter Matter, matter can be perceived by any of the physical senses like touch, touch, smell, any of the senses by the physical senses we can feel the matter. And now the question comes, what does it comprise of? Mat matter comprises of living and non-living matter. Matter comprises of living and non-living matter. So now you are familiar with what the matter actually is. What is the composition of matter? What does it comprise of? So we know what the matter is now. Now in the next step we are going to classify the matter. So when we classify the matter, we classify it under two categories. See, we can classify it under two categories that is physical classification and chemical classification. When I talk about physical classification, that means we have the different physical states that exist in which the matter can exist. So the three physical states which we have studied in previous classes also, that is solid, liquid and gas. As you all have studied only three uh, these uh, states of physical classification of matter but you will be shocked to know there are actually seven classes of matter which you are going to start it study in the higher class so i will list for you those uh, other classes apart from these three solid liquid gas plasma bec colloidal state fermi condensate so actually there are seven states of matter but in the previous classes you are only familiar with the three states solid liquid gas and these states also you will be taking in the higher class but for your knowledge i am telling you that the matter exists actually in the seven states of matter but in daily routine life we come across only three states that is solid liquid and gas now 
what is the difference between the solid liquid and gas or do you have any example in your mind have you seen any solid substance can you tell me an example okay i'll tell you an example for i'll take an example for you see you must have seen ice you must have seen the marker or you must have seen a chair so these are these all come under the category of solid and when we talk about liquid liquid means water milk these all are comes under the category of liquid and gases like nitrogen gas oxygen gas air everything that comes under the category of gas now the question comes what is the difference what actually they have that some certain substance only exist as solid some exist only as liquid and some exist as gas like you cannot have o2 in solid form do you have o2 in solid form no you get o2 only in a gaseous form similarly water water occur in three states it occurs in ice also it occur in liquid state also it occur in vapor state also so that means we have different substances which can either occur in two states or they occur in fixed one state or they can occur in three of the states so we should know that what is the difference between these states that why we call ice as solid or water as liquid or vapor as gas though it is formed of the same component h2o you know water is formed of the same component h2o it contain two hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom but still it exists in different states if it exists as ice you say it is a solid water is in solid form if it exists in water you say it is a liquid form of water when it exists as vapor you say it is a gaseous form so i want you to know that what actually the difference between the solid liquid and gases so i will list it for you so just look at the board carefully see in solid for example i take an example of ice or i take an example of wooden block so in both of them we say we see they have definite shape they have definite volume they have definite mass you cannot compress it what do you mean by compress compress means you cannot make the particle come closer to each other the particles you cannot make the particles to move much closer to each other so that means they are almost incompressible solids we'll be doing it later that why they can't be compressed and what is the factor that governs the compressibility on and more they have definite shape volume definite mass we cannot compress it and also they have high densities so these are the properties which we get to see in a solid substance if any substance fulfill these five properties that means it exists as solid the existence of that substance is solid at room temperature and when we take up liquid then what is the what are the factors which govern the substance to exist as liquid they have definite volume they again say similar same as solid they have definite mass but they don't have definite shape they take the shape of the container for example if you uh, put the water in a tall tumbler the shape of the water will be like that if you will place it in a wide vase or something like that it will acquire the shape like that so liquid takes the shape of the container in which you keep it and when we talk about the compressibility they have little compressibility and the factor which is responsible we'll be taking it later on as i've told you the compressibility factor is governed at the molecular level we'll be doing it in the next topic so for for this moment you should know that it is little compressible and it is almost incompressible and they have less density as compared to solid so any substance which fulfill these five properties exist as liquid at room temperature and when we talk about gas then gas does not have definite shape it does not have definite volume it does not have definite mass and but it is much compressible out of solid liquid and gas it is much compressible but its density is least so these are the three three you can say the factors that govern the existence of substance as solid liquid or gas now i want you to know much about not much about these terms but at least you should know what exactly it is plasma plasma is the fourth state how you can get it when you superheat the gas see in gas the particles are almost far apart when you superheat the gas 
when the gas is super heated the ions electrons everything they move out and the charged particle starts moving that is called the plasma the plasma is the super heated gaseous state and when we take bec bec is super cooled solid so the plasma comes after the gas and the bec comes before the solid because when you will cool super cool the solid then they will the particles will unite to form a single substance they will condense into a single atom see in solid i have told you they have particles are very close to each other when we are when we will super cool it that means they will unite and they will unite they will lose their identity and they will combine to form a condense to form a single substance single atom you can say so it is bec bec so bec is a state which is achieved by super cooling solid and in gas as i've told you particles are far apart so in plasma when you heat it then the particles they even the at at the gaseous level there are the uh, part, gaseous particles which are far apart but in plasma the electron protons charge particle comes out of atom and they are randomly moving so this is the plasma state which is achieved by superheating the gaseous state so these are the states of the matter classification on the basis of physical classification so matter is classified into on the basis of physical classification again i'm repeating it for you solid liquid gas the properties i've told you and the other states plasma bec colloidal and fermi condensate so these are the physical classification one more thing i want you to know we often use word vapor and gas we don't know actually what the difference is between the vapor and gas sometimes somebody is using uh, for o2 it is a gas you sometimes you are using o2 vapor is there but there is a difference between the vapor and the gas now what what is that difference now see substance is said to be gas which exists as gas at room temperature for example if i take o2 o2 sample here when where we are teaching if we take the o2 sample here o2 sample here means it is at room temperature no external condition is here we are not heating anything we are not applying pressure or anything it is the normal room temperature conditions and uh, to, uh, normal pressure conditions so when we are taking that gaseous sample at this condition so thus o2 will exist as gas only so when any substance exist as gas at room temperature it is said to be gas but when we take into account vapor so what the, actually the vapor is suppose if i take a glass of water or a sample of water at this same condition room temperature and room pressure so what will happen you will get to see water in a liquid state if it will not exist in a gaseous state it it will exist in a liquid state so that means its actual state is the vapor is a gaseous state but at room temperature it exists as liquid so we call what is the difference between gas and vapor gas exists as gas at room temperature and vapor exists as liquid at room temperature but when you heat that liquid above room temperature it exists as in a gaseous form that is it is called that gaseous form is called as vapor so there is a huge difference between vapor and gas both terms sound to be same but actually they are different so i'll repeat again for you gas exists as gas at room temperature and vapor exists as liquid at room temperature but when you increase that temperature it becomes into a gaseous convert into gaseous state and that gaseous state is called as vapor suppose we are taking an example of ammonia so ammonia exists as gas at room temperature if i'll take a sample of ammonia at room temperature it will exist as gas but when i will heat it we'll get to see ammonia vapor so that means the uh, otherwise it exists as liquid uh, i have used the term ammonia but for example we take an example of water so if we'll take a water and uh, gaseous state uh, sorry at room temperature it will exist as liquid but when we will heat it it will exist in a gaseous state so it is called as water vapor that means otherwise the existence is liquid but at above room temperature it exists as vapor